Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Moses. I'm back again with another video. And today's video, I am breaking down uh, one of my very first serious gospel music production. One of the first songs that I did that was really nice, in my opinion. I started producing like in the year 2018. This song, I made it in between 2019 and 2020. So it was just about two years into music production and uh, it really pushed me to kind of go beyond what I would normally do as somebody who was just learning how to produce music. Now, there's a reason why I'm doing the breakdown of this production. I live in Canada, I travel to the UK for vacation and we were, we were in for a birthday celebration and he was asked to come and, you know, minister and perform the song. And this was the first time I would see him performing the song live. He was performing the song and the energy in the room was wow. So as it was ministering, I was like, wow. This song is actually, it's nice. Although there was not so much, you know, production, uh, sorry, promotion that went into the song. So the song is not quite a popular song in a way, but the song is really nice. The acceptance was crazy. The audience were jumping. It's a high tempo praise kind of song. And I felt, I couldn't, I couldn't really describe how I feel. Uh, I was feeling at that moment, I was just feeling thankful, feeling grateful that, wow, God, you did this. So I decided to break it down. I wanted to even go back for myself to see what did you do in the song? You should do more of that <laughs> because <laughs> the song felt nice. So I, I went back to open the session and look at it again for myself. And I wanted to share all of that with you, what was done to the song, why was it done a separate way. So that being said, this video is not a quick video. Uh, it's a very long video. It's going to be long. We're in for, for a treat. So, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. You're going to learn something. Either you were just learning how to produce like I was, uh, and I'm still learning how to produce because it's a long journey. Disclaimer. I am, you know, I'm a keys player first. Keyboard is my main instrument. I'm not a pro organ player. I play organ from the perspective of a keys player. It is what it is. I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm not a ons arranger, pro ons arranger. No. I'm not a pro string arranger. No. So when you hear some things that doesn't feel like it's real, blah, 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 blah. Trust me, I know I'm not, I'm not claiming to be what I'm not. So I'm trying to get somewhere. Uh, sometimes you got to work with what you have and uh, stop making excuses about what you don't have or what you don't really know. Do what you can and, you know, go forward from there. So... This is all by feel. This whole song, this whole arrangement is all by how I feel when I was conceptualizing the song. So let's get in the song. Uh, I'll put the link to the song in the description. You guys go check out the song. It's called Your Love Remains by uh, Kelechi Angigo. All right, so I'm just going to play some sections. There's no lead vocal on this. This is the production uh, session. This is not even the mixed session. Okay, so let's get into a couple of sections from the song and we'll break it down. All right, let's go.
master song. Uh, I was keeping through it uh, just to move, just to move on very quickly. Uh, but you guys can you go check out the song, play the full song. It's a really nice song. So now let's get into the song. You know, I think I was just sent the voice notes on WhatsApp or something like that, and you build the song from there, which we'll get into. The way I approach music production, um, I like to look for a reference in a way, if possible. Now, all songs are different, but there's really nothing you're doing that has never been done before. And you can always learn from those who have come before you and what they've done. There was a song I was studying, which is My Strength by Israel Huthin. You guys should check out that song. So the brass lines inside were kind of like, I studied that, I like the feel of the song. I felt like this song can be modeled and some of some things can be taken from that song, you know, adapted to the song. And that was what I did. So you can check out the song, reference it, play it back and forth and play this song as well. You can kind of hear, especially for the ons. Uh, let's start from the arrangement. The song has an intro, there's a verse, there's a chorus, uh, there's an intro again. We go back to the verse, we sing the chorus, right? And we start the modulations. The choruses are in modulations, like two modulations. And then we go to the bridge. And then there is a trap kind of session. Like when I had the song, I knew it that this trap thing kind of feel fit in there. And it has to be there. Like it feels so good. So we had that one in there. And then we went back to the bridge to finish the song. So pretty much that's the these are the sections in the song. It just goes like that. Now, why do I start my production? Usually I'll, I ask the people when they are not close to where I am, I would ask them to record to a metronome, to a tempo, so that it's easy for me to work with. If they are in my studio, we will work with a metronome. So we sync a demo to a metronome and then I can proceed from there. But if they are away, I will ask them to put a metronome in the background and sync over the metronome, then send that to me. And when I get that, then I start with the percussion and the loops, whatever you call it. And then I play the piano over that, you know, whatever the arrangement I'm hearing in my head, uh, the intro the chord changes, the chord progression that feels best. The chord progression can feel nice. Another chord progression can also feel nice for the same song. So just go with what the spirit is telling you, you know, what your God feels, says, and move on from there. Don't stay too long with that. When I have the arrangement all done with the piano, then I will uh, just do my demo drums and then I'll do my demo bass as well okay and then i'll do my demo background vocals and i will do another another demo lead vocals i will remove the whatsapp audio or whatever that is because now the our song is all over the place now maybe i have a structure i have the intro chorus blah 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 that doesn't necessarily follow whatever i was given originally so now i have a different setup i have a different arrangement and my new lead vocals is in there and the demo background vocals. So now when I have all the arrangement all done, based on the budget of the track, we hire the right guys for the songs, uh, the backup singers, the lead guitar players, the bass player, drummer, all those things. Then we, I, I send them the, my demo bass. I don't play lead guitar, by the way. So. My lead guitar, they know what to play. I just tell them, I communicate with them. I want a distortion line here. I want swell here. I want acoustic here, blah, blah, blah. Right? I communicate with them what I want and we go back and forth as minimal as possible to make sure we are all on the same page. So I send that off. They do whatever they need to do. They send it back. I compete, work with it, listen all over, all over again and be sure I'm not missing anything. And we proceed with recording the actual lead vocals of the artist. 
and then we mix the song, we master the song, we get it out. Usually, when I get the track back from all these guys, so I start with the basics, right? The drums, the loops, the bass, the electric guitar, singers, the lead vocals. Sometimes I get the lead vocals back before I continue with building the track with more stuff. Or sometimes I finish building the entire track before it goes back to the lead vocals for recording. I try to avoid loading the project with a lot of aux keys before I record more important elements like lead guitar, bass, and backup, background vocals. Because when I load everything up, those guys are now limited from what they want to do. You know, they feel like they have to lay back because the track is already very heavy, which I don't want. I want them to give me everything they can. I can take out whatever I don't like and I can decide to not add more stuff to it if the song is good. Sometimes less is more. So I like to get all of those recordings back before I add more auxiliary stuff to it. So now let's let's get into the production. Let's start from the percussions, uh, loops. So my percussion is sometimes very heavy. In this song, there are a lot of different sections. So the percussion cannot be the same. Program the percussion, sometimes use samples, sometimes... Uh, plate if you have it at this point i did not have any percussion i was doing everything from logics uh percussion or maybe from slide sp splice uh sample the splice loop or uh, sample and just work with it All right, so you can hear the crowd cheer in there as the intro comes in because it's a praise song and the vibe, the energy. You want that crowd cheer to just give you that energy. That's why that crowd cheer needs to be there. Like it brings that energy. Everybody's shouting already the moment the song starts and the loop is just going. So you can hear the conga, you can hear the shakers, everything. Sometimes you mute some things. The, the tambourine in the chorus may be different from the tambourine in the verse uh, or in the bridge. You can't just have a stagnant loop or playing all throughout the song. Sometimes, you know, when you get to a particular section, you pause the whole thing. It makes it feel like there was a stop. And then it continue. Like a similar example is somewhere here. Yeah. Right? Just that few. And then the conga was not a loop. I was actually using my MIDI controller to play the conga. It's because it needs to match the arrangement of the song. If it doesn't match the arrangement of the song, then it's not realistic, right? So we want it to sound as realistic as possible, right? I, I put something thing down in here, like in my opinion, percussion is that extra thing that makes the drums feel good. So that I sometimes call it the feel good factor, right? So each section needs different groove. You don't want to just set the loop and forget it. You know, set your percussion and forget it for the entire song. It doesn't always work that way, right? You may have to mess with the groove of a certain section to get the feel and the vibe that you're looking for. So be careful always dragging and dropping loops from wherever and say, okay, this is my loop. You got to make sure your loop works with the song. So that's how I approach percussion. Sometimes you may have to play it. You may have to play the shaker because it's even difficult sometimes to program something. So you might have to buy a $20 shaker 
from your guitar center and do the shaking yourself. Put it on the microphone, right? So in this percussion, you can see I'm, I'm, I have a claps, two claps. I have the loop itself, which was, I think this loop was from Splice. You know, again, you can see not everywhere you have loops. Some places it's dead silent, no loop. Except for the crowd and the chime. But nothing is going on, right? So again, don't set and forget it. And then loops comes back in. Uh, for the trap section, again, it's a little different. Different element for the track kind of vibe. And we go back to the original groove. Okay. Let's talk about the drums. For this song, there was no budget to record live drums. So I programmed the drums in contact and added some samples to beef it up, which I don't do anymore. I don't like programming drums and sitting down and playing key drums and quantizing all day. It's hectic. You mess with velocities. It's a lot of headache. I don't do that anymore. I don't like to do that unless I absolutely need to do it. Okay. But let's get in the drums anyways. We've done it. Uh, it's in the song. Now we'll talk about it. So contact drums. Uh, we're using the studio drummer by Native Instrument. So I have a preset that I worked on to it. Call it gospel drums. If you want the preset, let me know. Uh, these are the drums sound like with the samples as well. Again, you can you can see the MIDI. The MIDI is still here, you know. It was when I was mixing, I exported out each individual element uh, as audio tracks. But in, in here, I added the sample, the kick sample, the rim sample, and the snare sample as well to the drums. And uh, they sound pretty okay. We mixed it like that. And uh, that is it. For the, uh, for the piano, let's talk about the pianos. Uh, for this song, being a press song, we have MKS, we have the road, and we have the piano itself. So, the MKS is just supporting the piano, and the road is doing some filling in every now and then, doing some other little, little things. Uh, the MKS just back in the piano, giving it more weight. You can tell if I mute those uh, roads and MKS right now. Let's hear how this sounds. And now let's bring in the MKS. Right? Now let's bring in the roads. Right, it's kind of bouncing around, adding some feel. That's what the road is doing. It's doing the same thing, giving it more body, that warmth of your roads, and also filling in every now and then. That's what the roads, uh, the MKS, that's what they're doing. So sometimes uh, when a particular instrument does something that is nice, I uh, will just bring it up a little bit more, you know, exaggerated. And also for the trap section, we have this, I call it far piano. Uh, I don't know why, but I call it far piano. Uh, let's see that one. Let's bring in the percussion for this area. Uh, I'm coming. The 
drums is just giving us cymbals. That's all the drums is doing in this section, just the cymbals. So we have uh, So with the PFR piano, all I just did was cut off some iron, cut, cut off the low end. Uh, I'm still cutting off low end in here uh, and put it in pretty much almost 100% wet reverb, almost 100% wet reverb. And I exported it, bounced it to audio and uh, you get the far piano. It made it feel like it's playing from far back. Uh, that's what the fair piano is doing for that track. Let's go back to our individual uh, channel breakdown uh, or section breakdown. So we have organ. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not a pro organ player. This organ, I used the Logic Stock organ. Trust me. For the piano... I used Keyscape for the piano, the MKS, and the Rhodes, all Keyscape. And then later on, I've been using the IK Multimedia B3X. But for this one, Logic, stock organ. <laughs> and it sounds good, right? Let's see it. All right, so just make sure it's clean, you know, work with the drawbars every now and then, uh, you know, push it sometimes, lay back sometimes. You can see from the wave file here, some places are hot, some places are kind of low, you know. Okay, so again, in some places, I'll bring it up a little bit when I'm playing something on the organ that fills the place. Now, this one came through a little bit when you hear the old song together. So now let's see you right here. Gave you that nice feel when we got to that bridge. And uh, I just have to that a little bit with some automation. We'll get into automation a little bit. Uh, just brought that up in that area. Make sure we are hearing it and we are feeling what that organ is doing in that section. Let's move on to the guitars. Again, the guitars, I just sent the track and whatever the bass and whatever I've done with the bass and whatever I've done with the drums and keys, I send it to my guy. Shout out to Emmanuel. Emmanuel has been working on, on almost all of my productions. He's an amazing guitar player. If you don't know him, you should follow him. Check him out. Emmanuel Ikenem. I'm putting his Instagram handle uh, in the description. You guys go check him out. But let's listen to some of this guitar. There's a guitar solo in the song as well, which he completely brutalized in a good way. The thing is, some guitar player knows what the song needs in a section, in another section, all those kind of things. He knows what the song needs. This kind of songs, you want that wah pedal effect in the vast section. It gives you that, right? So in the intro, let's, let's hear he's from the intro section. That's all he's doing in this section, this intro section. It's just one, 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 all through. And when we go to the verse,
Now, this wouldn't make sense unless I play it all together, so which I'm going to. So you get the idea. It's just giving you whatever the song needs at every point. When we go back to the uh, intro again, it brings back the one, 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 which you did in the intro, brought it back again. You did all of those, uh, you know, and then let's listen to that solo section. That solo sounds good. And then we just ended the song with uh, another, possibly another solo. Uh, no, not a solo. It was just filling in. It was complimenting the, the lines that we were playing in that area. So... And uh, that was it. So there's no acoustic guitar on the song. It's just all electric guitar. Uh, if it were to be maybe like a worship style song, maybe there will be some acoustics on the song, depending on whatever the song needs. All right. Let's move on to another section. Let's talk about the bass. Shout out to uh, my guy for playing this bass. Uh, this is Emmy and of God. This guy is a talented bass player. Uh, he was doing some nasty stuff every now and then. In those places, I try to bring bring it up. Uh, you see my automation is all over the place here. If I hear him do something crazy, I quickly make sure I bring it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And another one. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Mmm, nasty. <laughs> Let's see what it in this one. This one. Mmm, I love it. I have the bass guitar. I put it on an amp. This is the bass guitar alone. Let me go to these areas. But then that's with the amp, so it gives you just a little bit more weight. And then we have the key bass for the trap section. Honestly, I can't remember what instrument I used for the key bass. Trust me, this file has been in existence for a while. You know, this is 2020. Uh, I can't remember uh, what particular instrument I use for the key bass. Possibly Omnisphere or possibly Alchemy. Yeah. Possibly Alchemy. So that was just doing its thing. And we have some 808. Uh, which I think I use the E and ES2 preset on this eight oh eight. You can hear the tape uh the tape uh whatever in this in this track. 
that slow down tape effect, right? You can hide that from logic in here. You just have to break down the audio and hide the, the tape effect and make sure you edit it until it feels good to you. Right? So if we had that with the kick and with the percussion, right, on that trap section. With the key bass. Yeah, we just want to make sure the... 808 and the kick they are in phase you want to check that sometimes you want to zoom in properly and check everything make sure you line them up uh i'm sure that's also one of the reasons why some of these things are not necessarily on the grid i also intentionally laid them back a little bit like if you hear the piano on this trap section you can tell it's laid back Uh, that that section uh yeah that right there was just a little laid back in a way so you can hear you can hear that so that trap section you want to kind of give it the j dealer vibes where you just lay back a little bit let it swing and i, I thought it i thought it sounds good so we talk about that now let's talk about the ons uh in this section all these ons are not real ons they are programmed from a bunch of vsts i think just three so i had the contact press this is from the session ons i have the logic press uh and i have one orchestra brass this one is from the Roland Cloud stuff. I'm not sure, can't remember which of the VST, but it's one of the Roland Cloud Orchestra, uh, you know, stuff. You can check them out and see. So I layer the three of them together just to make it sounds full. But even with that, I still added some synth brass to them just on the low key. And then I add to the program another section where well, it's just on the falls uh, when I need the falls. Because this orchestra brass one didn't have, uh, th there's a preset for the normal brass and then there's a preset for the I think for the fall, the orchestra falls. So you have to, if you want the fall, you have to switch the presets. So I had to record those differently, right? So for this section, let's let's hear this ons. So you can hear some like the logic brass has this expression to it. Uh, the contact brass also has some expression to it. The orchestra brass is just playing. It's just all the way in there. Uh, for the falls, uh, that one has some stabs in it as well. If you're just trying to accentuate something, uh, you just want to put those tabs to make it feel heavy. So the ons were just going, uh, but let's go to the place where the ons were like doing the work, which I kind of like. After the intro, when we started modulating, they started doing some nice stuff. That is the ons. So it's not real ons. Uh, but we just had it, we needed to put in some ons. You get the ons, and we still had some synth brass to just kind of give it more, more vibe. Uh. So 
so this ones so we're modeling the chords of the organ or uh, the keys as well uh it's just giving the keys and the organ some more top end and beefing them up a little bit before the actual brass comes in And then the trap section, we have this other instrument in here, uh, which are just some other synth brass stuff. I think uh, this one didn't eventually make it because I muted it because I felt like it was getting too heavy. I had to take it out. Sometimes to be to be able to know when you can tell that is enough, you have to do way too much. When you do make too much, then you can tell that, okay, wait, it's enough. I got to stop. Dial it back down. And then we continue with, you know, the ending section with some more energy. These synth brass, we're just giving more energy. We just want, after the trap section, it needs to feel more big. That's why these sections, this trance and massive, they were not here from the beginning. But the moment we finished that trap section, we needed more energy, more hype. And the way to get that is from like, I end type synth that I just filling up the space and giving it more energy a lot of symbols as well a lot of open art just marking the snare as well maybe double timing the kick if you have to uh like if we listen to this section after the after the trap section Right, the toms, they're just going on, they're just going on and on and on. So, but with that, you have to bring in, include more synth press and probably more parts. When we get to parts, we'll see what we're doing there. without the brass for the parts nothing too crazy on this one we're using some parts the new down stuff was from Anna 2 by Slate Digital which I don't use anymore uh, string parts I can remember probably this is from Omnisphere uh, this is some omnisphere part as well part octaves so i sometimes do something where when i play a part at the middle section of the keys i play a similar kind of part on the high octave just to fill up the space with that top end so that's the octave parts in this one So I think this is the bridge section where we're doing I'm swimming in the ocean, your love, something like that. But I needed something that is arpeggiating. I called it the moving part. Like it's just arpeggiating and giving that something is moving, something is swimming, right? That's the part, and we're just following the song arrangement in some places. Nothing uh, 
nothing major, probably just one part in another place to and in some other places, uh, like the outro, like I mentioned, the similar situation with the synth brass. This one also has like more parts just filling in the space. So we get the idea. Let's go to the next instrument, the bells. Uh, this is another situation of you overdo before you realize, okay, that's more than enough. Cut it back. So if you can see here, at the end of the day, there were only two sections that needed the bell on this area and in this area. Every other ones, I had to take it out because it was too much. All right, just on that, you know, little pre-chorus side, I think, and then we did a similar thing here, I believe. And that was it for the bells. For the bells, we're using the Omnisphere bell. Um, I think it's called the Wax Station bell in Omnisphere, so you should check it out if you have Omnisphere. Uh, and for the second bell, uh, which is on the, the Fantasia bell, I think this one is on the Roland Cloud uh, stuff, the Roland D50 VST, uh, I think that's called Roland D50. Put them together, they fill out uh, a different frequency spectrum, each of them. So the first one, That's the Omnisphere Bell and the Fantasia Bell. You see, they're kind of different. This one has a little bit of that fifth note in there, like harmonizing itself. And this one is just on, on the top a little bit. Uh, and you got your bell for the song. Now let's talk about lead scenes. Sometimes I had lead scenes all over the place. Uh, this one, Sample Tank, Bright All. Uh, this one is from the IK Multimedia Sample Tank 4. The intro, we have this analog lead, which is from the retro synth. That's the one. You can EQ it, add more reverb delays and stuff. Yeah, sample dunk R and B lead. Uh, yeah, this one is R and B lead. I guess you can also find it from other instruments. This one is a sign delay. I use this a lot in my production. I use it more like an EFX synth lead uh, right here. Just arpeggiating and a lot of delays. Pentatonic run, delays, reverbs. This is uh, uh, some of my plugins that I used far back then. I don't use them anymore uh, when I got the new MacBook. Uh, so some of these plugins are not uh, working yet, but I decided just to leave it in there anyways. Uh, so this is an imager. Uh, in this case now, I might just use the IK Multimedia Quad image for the same effect. Because I found something that works for the plugins I don't have anymore. Uh, so you can appreciate what this sign delay is doing when you hear it with the entire song. So you hear that? that it just give you the effect, like air candy. Like, where did that come from? Just subtle, isn't there? And again, on the other hand here. Mm -hmm. 
Just that pentatonic run to end that section. And it's just delayed and the reverb. It just makes sense to have that in there and give you that air candy. Uh, there's this space impact. So again, this section, again. Just needed another kind of like attention grabber, something like that. If there's any, if there's ever a word like that, just grab your attention. Just give that effect. Uh, another whistle lead, I believe this one was from the Roland Cloud stuff again. Uh, I can't remember which instrument, honestly. But it's this particular instrument with a lot of green buttons. Uh, you guys that use Roland Cloud stuff now, you know. I don't use it anymore, by the way. Since I have, uh, I just use Omnisphere a lot for my synth stuff now. So, or oh, Serum, I'll just program it. So, and on the trap section, it was also doing something. Actually, before the trap section, I was doing something with it. Yeah. Right. Just put it on a little room vibe. Yeah. Right, it's just doing that, and the the trap section it was working with the with the piano, uh, just with the piano. It's a solo the piano here, and let's hear what this whistle lead is doing again in this section. And uh, we have this arpeggiating bells. We have you know, some more atmospheric stuff that I was just using, apart from the crowd cheer that you heard at the beginning with the percussion stems. When we got to the, I'm swimming in the ocean of your love. I needed something that feels like an ocean, like an ocean waves. So I got this sample from uh, Splice, I believe. It's just a sample, just an ocean wave, something atmospheric that make you actually feel like you're hearing some ocean. The funny thing is you are not actually going to hear this well in the song, but you're just going to feel it a little bit. So it's just there, uh, adding a little bit of atmospheric vibe to the whole thing. Uh, let's talk about the strings. This is not proper strings. It's more like helping and accentuating the brass of the arms. So you can see it's not all over the place. Uh, it's typically just where you see the arms, then you see some of the strings. Uh, in there. So really very basic strings. So this one is just helping all of the things that is happening here. That's tab. All right, he's just helping that stab in there. But there is this step orchestra one. I believe I got this one also from the uh, Roland Cloud stuff. Man, I used to use that Roland Cloud stuff, yeah, but then I stopped. So 
the subscription stuff, uh, I couldn't keep up with every subscription out there. So that's the the tape orchestra stuff. It was just helping during that trap section, just giving that movement. And then I have the tremolo effect that is just moving from left to right, moving from left to right. Again, this section is talking about swimming in the ocean of your love. Things need to move around, let it move, not stagnant. That's my concept. So sometimes I will use whatever the word, the lyric is saying, I use it to kind of like create the idea and find something that works with that lyrics. Marry them. Basic stuff, basic strings, basic keyboard strings. This is not programmed, orchestra, four piece, five piece, violin, one violin, two, viola, cello, double bass. Uh, no, this is just basic strings. And uh, we have some claps, acoustic claps, just to kind of like, you just tack them all together. Uh, they were actually phasing. Uh, but then I just left in in there anyways. I put a little bit of reverb on them. Uh, they just helping with the intro section, I believe. When people hear the clap from the record, especially when you are like ministering the song live, when people hear the clap, they tend to clap. So. If the lyric is saying, he was actually saying, clap your hands, all ye people, you know, shout out to God, all those kind of things. So the crowd cheer is shouting. The acoustic clap is clapping. When they hear those things, they tend to do that because in their head, if you're sitting in the front and all of a sudden you hear cheer and claps, you probably think it's coming from behind. So you clap. And you shout. If you're behind and you hear shouts of joy and claps, you probably think it's coming from the front. And you tend to clap. So we use this. I like to use this to like, you know, help the artist to minister better and engage the audience, if that makes sense. So we have claps all over the place, doing different grooves, uh, different accentuations in some places. Uh, Some of the, uh, you know, you got to do them on the two and fours in some places. Uh, and then the other ones, they're just on the one, two, three, four, all the way. Uh, but then on the two and fours, you make those, I made those ones louder. Uh, again, just by feel of what I, what feels good when you clap into the song, right? And then the BGVs. So the BGVs, shout out to Greenworks, man. That guy is OG. I usually do my fake demo, uh, the way I like the things to go. Maybe inversion here, another inversion here. Sometimes I can eat the note. My soprano usually, they use it as their auto, and then they add another soprano. So my, my tenor becomes the soprano on the high octave, right? And my auto becomes the tenor. Sometimes, because I can sing the arrange, they, they can do that. So, and then they just take the idea into another level, right? Uh, let's hear what my fake singing sounds like. You guys don't laugh, please. You are my strength, my prayers and help. Okay, you get that? Lord, how we give you a new song. But just to give them an idea, right, that I have unison here and I want you to s split your three-part harmony somewhere here. Chart my heart, how we give you a new song. All right, now let's hear what they did. You are my strength, my presence, help. 
I will praise you all day long. Jesus, your love has captured my heart. I will sing you a new song. All right. Literally, just take the same idea, but expand on it, and then it sounds lush. And then I added a couple of processing in there. I want to know what the finished product may sound like, uh, even though this is not the mixing uh, session. And another section that I love during the trap side. Uh, Right here. You hear that tenor was like, he just went to that flat seven. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I loved it. When I heard it, I was like, oh my God, great works. What? What are you doing, bro? Uh, I didn't have that in my own. It, that was just his own thought process. Again, he's a producer as well. So that's why it's always good to collaborate uh, with other people and they can always just add their own thing. That's the record. This is everything. Now let's talk about the last thing, automations. I feel like you got to be able to automate everything, man. Like a lot of things need automation to bring out what each instrument is doing. You got to do automation on the drums, on the keyboard, on the bass. Listen, sometimes listen through everything and look for those little, little elements and automate them. Bring them out. Uh, I think this sounds good when you automate and let things move. Um, opening this session up kind of inspired me to do more, especially when I saw the ministration life. I'm like, I was inspired to kind of just do more stuff, do more stuff, you know. Um, and again, I would say try not to produce with template. You know, don't have favorite sounds so that every song don't sound the same. I always just go by feel of what the song needs. Sometimes you wouldn't need this much instrument for the song. Sometimes you need more, whatever the song needs. Do right uh, by the song. Go the extra mile, uh, look for the sound, design the sound in your head. Uh, let the song speak to you. Let the words of the song speak to you to kind of find the sounds that work or the vibe that works for the song. Learn how to mix. Uh, I think it's going to help a lot. If you're a producer, you should learn how to mix, especially, especially learn how to use EQ properly, reverb properly, uh, delays properly. Uh, if you hear some things that the BGVs are doing in here, uh, let's look at the trap session again. Did you hear that? Feedback. And I was side chaining that delay. I was I was doing a bunch of automations in here. That, that last section. Mod some automation in there and the delay as well was kinda like I was side chaining the delay. Right, if I solo the delay. You see how that side chain is kind of like bringing the delay up when they are not singing. You know, the feedback amount that is necessary. This is a lot of feedback, but because I'm side chaining it, when the uh, vocals come through, it shuts it off, shut it down a little bit, and they keep going. And it's in ping pong mode. Filter the reverb a little bit with the filters that comes. Again, learn how to mix. If you learn how to mix, you can learn how to use the right instrument for the right element. The right instrument, every instrument has their dominant frequency area, and you can choose instrument to fit in each of the frequency areas so that everything can come out well. So if you land on the mix, use this effect properly, 
I think you should be fine. You'll be you'll be able to do really cool stuff. Uh, guys, if you want some of the some of my presets on some of the things that I use for music production, if you like a particular sound in here, let me know. I can try to find it if I still have the VST. But many of them, especially some of the synth brass stuff, were like from Logic, uh, Logic stuff, man. It's just from like logic stuff. If you like that, let me know. I have a loop pack that I'm working on. If you are a church musician and you use loops for your prison worship and things like that, I have something coming up for you guys. You guys watch out for that. It's coming soon. And uh, comment below. Let me know. Do you like this long content? Did you learn anything? Uh, you know, let's vibe, let's talk. If you learn anything, if you like to see more of this kind of breakdown, even though they are long, it could be for mixing, uh, it could be for another production. Uh, let me know if you like to, to see more of this kind of stuff. Thank you, guys. Make sure you comment below, guys. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be aware when I drop a new video, uh, when I drop a new video. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Uh, I have some other videos coming up. Make sure you watch them uh, and enjoy more stuff from the channel. See you. Peace.